Yo, what's going on guys? Sin City Guns here out in Las Vegas. So I'm gonna do a series of videos here, probably, probably three or four videos or so, on my transition to my new carry weapon. So I had done a video about two weeks ago when I first bought this new Gen 4 Glock 19. And I had briefly touched on in the video why I wanted to pick up a, a new Glock. More or less, I just needed an excuse to buy a new gun, so I justified it in my head, but it is what it is. Um, so I'm claiming that the main reason I want to switch from my Gen 2 Glock 19 that I've had forever is because mainly I want something with a rail, and I want it to be able to carry this new XC1 from Surefire. So when that first came out, I wasn't really sold on it, and I've had very good luck with other Surefire products in the past, but this was always just a little bit too big for carry. Hopefully it's not too windy here, I'm outside in the courtyard, so uh, kids are inside playing, it's a little too loud inside. Hopefully this wind doesn't, uh, doesn't pick up too much on camera. But anyways, so I wanted to be able to carry the new XC1. So that was the main reason. So I'd gone to my guys down at Freedom Firearms a couple of weeks ago, and I had seen this awesome, awesome Gen 4 Glock 19. Now this one is done by one of the major distributors, uh, AccuSport, and I can't get a firm answer. This is either their Midnight Bronze, or I've also heard Tactical Bronze. But I thought it was pretty cool. I got a ton of black guns just like everything else and I wanted a little bit of a change. So I have some other guns here to kind of compare it to. So this here is the Wilson that I had done in burnt bronze. And as you can see, it's definitely darker. This actually, from certain angles, it still looks like a black gun. But it had, it was kind of a unique color. And then I'll show it next to this is the Vickers FDE Gen 3 RTF2 frame. So there it is next to that. And here is the STI Hextac in FDE. And then there you go, next to a regular black block. So like I said, I'm going to do a series of videos of how I'm going to set this up. Now what I got here, like I said, the main reason is because I want to be able to throw this XC1 on it. I think it's an awesome little weapon light and I like how it's so small, I like how it's so light. So I'm going to be putting that on there. And then I'm going to be putting the Warren Tactical Savigny Competition sights on it. This is what I like to run on all my guns here. And that's what I have on this Glock here. Plain blacked out rear, and I like the green fiber optic up front. But that's pretty much what I run on all my guns. It just really works for me. I like the green fiber optic. My eyes pick it up really well and I think it's awesome for daytime shooting. I think fiber optic, in my opinion, is one of the best. I'm not a big fan of night sights, only because at night, I'm really gonna wanna positively ID the threat anyways, and with a weapon-mounted light, you're gonna have no problem picking up a fiber optic with that anyways. So that's kind of my theory. I've never put it to the test, thank God. Hopefully I don't have to, but guys' opinion may differ. Okay, so we're going to be putting the Warren Tactical Savigny sights on it. I already put the Vickers uh, slide stop on it. I just really prefer that Vickers. Uh, it's not very pronounced, but it still gets the job done. I really like to slam that magazine home and really be able to send that slide forward um, 
with my shooting thumb. So we'll be putting the sights on it. I already got that guy there. Um, we'll be putting the XC1 on it. And then I'm also gonna try out this uh, Zevtech Fulcrum trigger. So this is my this will be my first time with the Zevtech trigger. Right now, in this 17, I'm running I'm running a Terran Ter Tactical trigger in this, and I do like it. It's nice and light. It's a little bit squishy for my for my taste. Um, there's really not that firm wall. It's just squish, 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 and it is a very light trigger pull, and it is a very short reset, and it's real pronounced reset, but like I said, that wall is kind of squishy. So it's not a bad trigger, and I, I do like it. In my Carry 19 here, my Gen 2, I'm running a GlockTriggers.com Edge Competition Trigger. This is just as light, but you do have a little bit more of a firm wall, and that reset is a little bit more pronounced. So I do like that. It's not as squishy. You kind of pull, you hit that wall, and then the trigger breaks really clean. It's, it feels just as light as the Terran Tactical in this one. But like I said, this is a little bit more squishy. So I think that's just a matter, matter of preference. But that's what I've been running in this. And I'm gonna try this new Zevtech and see how that goes. I know some people have different opinions on not running a modified trigger in a carry weapon. Um, I've heard everything from possible legal ramifications and everything like that. I've spoken to my attorneys and also spoken to a couple of attorneys that do um, concealed carry uh, concealed carry insurance and nobody has seemed to be able to produce an actual court case where a modified trigger was an issue so hopefully I'm not missing anything there but I think uh, if I ever were to pull this out and have to use it I've probably already made my decision there and I think you can train enough to keep that finger off the trigger until it's actually time. And in truth, I don't think there's much difference. I don't think a couple of pounds is gonna make a difference. I do think that a lighter trigger, at least for me, makes me more accurate. And I think the more important thing, if you're gonna pull out a carry weapon and use it, is actually hitting and hitting what you wanna hit reliably. So that's my justification in my own head for having a lighter trigger. So what I am going to do, I'm going to throw all this stuff on here. I also have a another INCOG or G-Code INCOG Eclipse holster. I have one being made right now for the 19 and the XC1. So that'll be the complete setup. It'll be the new Gen 4 Glock 19 with the Vickers slide stop with the Warren Tactical Savigny sights, with the Zevtech, Zevtech Fulcrum Trigger, and the XC1, and it'll be in a new G-Code INCOG Eclipse holster, or I'm sorry, G-Code Eclipse holster. So that's gonna take a couple more weeks. I ordered this two weeks ago, the day that I got the gun, and they're saying four weeks for that. So in the meantime, I'm gonna throw these sights on it, I'm gonna throw the trigger on it, and I am going to get some video. I want to run a solid thousand rounds through at minimum with all of this stuff on it, just so I have the peace of mind to know that this trigger has been installed correctly and it's uh, operating reliably before I actually carry this. So the other thing, you know, I have pretty good size hands and I don't have an issue with any of these other guns. And a Gen 2 Glock has been fine. I do get this rubberized little grip tape here. Uh, on this Gen 2 and I put it on with some some epoxy just to give me a little bit more grip But I've never had an issue with the thickness of a Glock grip the Glock 17 actually Gen 3 The finger grooves don't really bother me either. I don't like doing any um, Cuts or anything like that and the stippling is something that's never appealed to me Although I do have a couple I do have like my Terran tactical uh, Benelli shotgun that's stippled and I think that's really nice. So I think if they're done right um, they can be useful, but at least for me, the Gen 3 finger grooves on a 17 fit me perfect. So I actually like them. Now, on the Gen 4, 
I am going to try it with no back strap first, so it's a thinner grip. I'm just anxious to see. I actually can't tell too much of a difference. The finger grooves on the 19, the Gen 3 is the same way. Uh, with my hand, the middle of my pinky hits that bottom one, but it's never been too much of an issue for me. I'm more concerned with how this reduced grip size is actually going to affect me, if anything. But I'll just kind of show you the difference here with my hand. So that's me getting pretty much a full grip. And as you can see, I put my other offhand thumb in there. Pretty much no gap. And on the Gen 2, it's pretty much the same. So I think the difference from here to here on a two, Gen 2 versus the Gen 4, I don't see much of a difference. The one annoying thing with this, uh, this AccuSport, and this is kind of unique to these special edition Gen 4s that are done by this AccuSport, but it's pretty annoying. They didn't do the back straps. So all of the other back straps are still black. Now I have looked at a couple of Flat Dark Earth and uh, I can't remember the other color from Lipsy's. And that's the other major distributor that's doing these, these runs of, of uh, colored Glocks. And they do do the back straps. So that's kind of annoying. So I'm gonna try it without it. And if I do end up having to put one of these other back straps on to thicken up the grip, then I'll probably end up sending these to AccuSport and having them do these in this same midnight or tactical bronze color just to match. So that's the one thing I think was kind of crappy. I think I paid around 615 or so, 610 for this. And I just think you're paying a premium, especially over a regular Gen 4 Glock 19. They should definitely do the back straps. But everything else is pretty standard. Got the three mags. Um, Got the bike lock there, which is cool. I was running low on those. And I did pick up the, uh, the slide stop that I already threw in there from Vickers. But everything else is pretty standard, just like your regular Gen 4 Glock 19. So this is my first Gen, Gen 4 Glock 2. So I'm kind of excited about that. Uh, like I said, I've, obviously I have Gen 2 and several Gen 3s, um, but never a Gen 4, so we'll see. But there she is. So I'll be setting it up. And again, I'll kind of put this next to some of these other bronze and FDEs. So the next video, I'll have all the upgrades done on the Gen 4. And I will also get some footage shooting it at the range. And I think what I'll do is I'll do a video where I get all thousand rounds through it on video. So that way you guys can get a good look at the performance of a Gen 4 with the, uh, the Zebtech trigger in it and see how that runs thousand rounds. So there it is. This is, I guess, the second video in my new concealed carry journey. And I'll be back hopefully within another couple of weeks with some more. Well, there it is, Sin City Guns. Thanks you guys for watching. Shoot straight.